What's up, everyone? It is the day before Vessel of Hatred release, and with the many changes coming in Season 6, one of the most important to keep in mind as you hit level 60 are the changes coming to Paragon boards and glyphs. We are now artificially limited to 5 boards max, and the trade-off for that is that our glyphs can now become much more powerful, each having a new max level of 100 instead of the original 21. In addition, at level 46, each glyph will now gain an additional range as well as an additional bonus. Another huge change is that glyph leveling will now take place in the pit rather than in nightmare dungeons. So you'll now find Obdesite, which has become the only masterworking material all throughout nightmare dungeons, and you'll be grinding the pit in order to level your glyphs. Since the glyphs now have a much higher level, a significant portion of our endgame progression will be grinding pit levels in order to max out our glyph power and gain access to additional difficulties. So because of this new time investment, it's going to be more important than ever to know which glyphs to focus on and upgrade first. For the sake of this video, we're going to be considering the best glyphs as the glyphs that deliver the highest possible damage increase. There will certainly be cases for specific builds where other glyphs will work, but in PTR I found myself using basically the same five glyphs with every single build, and so if we focus on leveling these early, it will deliver the maximum possible damage for almost every build we play. And to be clear guys, this is not my personal opinion or what I think. These are simply the glyphs that will factually give the biggest mathematical damage increase purely based on the numbers, multipliers, and uptime. All right, so because it's not out yet, we're going to be driving around in Mobilytics for this, and I've been moving all my build planners over to this platform. So if you have a Mobilytics account and enjoy my builds, hit them with a like so more people can find them on there. Also, I just applied for their creator program, so we will see if anything comes from that. I'm going to be doing my very best to keep all these builds up to date throughout Vessel of Hatred based on the patch changes that occur. And if you want to see a list of all the updated builds, you can click my name in any of the build planners, and it should take you to this profile page that shows all of them with the date they were last updated. And each one will have an end game version with Mythics optimized for max level glyphs and Paragon points, as well as a progression variant without Mythics that shows the optimized Paragon and Glyph progression path. Okay, so for the new glyphs, what we want to be looking for is what I'm calling a golden glyph. And there's a very simple formula that makes a glyph golden. And that is we have additive damage at the top. For the first additional bonus, we have a multiplicative damage increase with high uptime. And for the second legendary bonus, we have a multiplicative damage increase with high uptime. So what we are looking for is additive damage at the top multiplier for the additional bonus with high uptime multiplier for the legendary bonus with high uptime. And the reason we are having to do this is because we lost three boards, guys. We were running eight boards max before that delivered eight multipliers we could achieve through our glyphs. Three of those are gone. So we are trying to recover what we lost and then some through the strategy. And we're actually going to get significantly more multiplicative damage this way than we did before. And that's because instead of eight multipliers to our damage, we are now going to have 10 new multipliers. And all of these are going to have extremely high uptime with almost every build. As long as your build is using critical strike, which almost every endgame sorcerer does, except for damage over time builds, as well as the build having high uptime on vulnerability, which is also extremely common in almost every in-game sorcerer build. All right, so let's take a look at the five glyphs I used during PTR, which are all basically perfect examples of this idea of a golden glyph. And the boards and the placement of these actual glyphs is going to vary build for build. I'm simply talking about which glyphs will give the biggest overall damage increase to basically every build. So let's start with this brand new glyph called Eliminator. Now this glyph is really cool because it basically does something that none of them have done before, and it targets the normal nodes. So you can see... Uh, every normal node within range is going to get some percentage increase. And for early sorcerer progression and damage, I think slotting Eliminator in this very first socket and even doing something like grabbing like every single node, maybe not the strength node, but if you need more crit or if you need more mana regen, you can scoop this extra dex and this extra will. But what you're really, really trying to do is scoop all this very early intelligence. And if you're leveling this one first, that's going to give you uh, the earliest intelligence damage scaling that you can possibly get, like the most amount of intelligence you will possibly have. And this one is even a little bit special because it's actually giving us three multipliers because this intelligence increase is actually, you know, a multiplier in our intelligence bucket. And then we're getting these additional bonuses that are our own individual multipliers. So you can see with this one, it is a super golden glyph because we have intelligence multiplier at top. We have 10% increased damage to elites as the additional bonus. And then we have 28.5% increase damage to elites as the secondary bonus and so if you consider what you need big damage for like you're never needing more damage to kill normal mobs all of your damage increases is helping you take out elites and bosses quicker so we can basically consider this multiplicative increased damage to elites as having 100 uptime 
Now there's going to be different places where you can socket this later on and move it around to optimize the amount of intelligence or other stats you're trying to get out of it. But I think for progression, slotting this glyph first and leveling it first and scooping all this early into around it, you're going to feel a significant sort of power spike from that extra intelligence scaling at that low level. This is going to be right after we hit level 60, just as we're starting our Paragon board progression, just as we're starting to get into the pit, we're going to be pumping Eliminator. All right, so now let's come up and take a look at our second golden glyph, which is Elementalist. And this one is dependent on the fact that you have to be using all three elements somewhere in your build. And especially with the addition of familiars, uh, it's actually quite easy now to get some form of each element coming through uh, in most of your builds. And so if we look at this glyph, is it a golden glyph? It has additive at the top. We can see we're getting this big, like 164% increase to non-physical. And if we look right here, we have this. So you want to slot this in, in a non-physical board, any board that has non-physical next to the node, which there's way more of now. It was only Enchantment Master before. Now there's like several boards, like I have it in Frigid Fate right now, but there are now several boards with a non-physical in range of the glyph. So this has multiple spots. It can be socketed. So we have additive at the top. We have 15% multiplier as the additional bonus, which should have very close to 100% uptime with most builds that are utilizing three elements. And we have 21% multiplicative non-physical damage for the legendary bonus. All right, and then coming up to our third uh, golden glyph, which is gonna be Unleash. And this is actually a new one uh, compared to, you probably didn't use Unleash before. This has been sort of like a sleeper uh, glyph that I've used a little bit in certain builds, especially if we need more mana regen, but now it becomes actually a very strong glyph because we can see we get a 327% to all magic nodes within range. So if you find a socket for it with high value magic nodes, uh, they're gonna be boosted by 320% at max level. So you can see like in this example, I have it slotted in Enchantment Master and we have uh, all this uh, damage to elites, like big additive damage to elites, and we have big additive damage to non-physical. So all that's gonna be increased by 320%. So Golden Glyph, we have additive at the top. For our additional bonus, we have a multiplier, 8% multiplier, along with a little increased mana regen. This is gonna be especially good for builds that aren't running Winter Glass or are struggling with mana, just for that extra mana regen that's gonna be kicking on basically all the time, You're spending 50 mana easily within three seconds. Uh, so that's basically going to have 100% uptime on that multiplier. And then we're just getting a flat, free 100% uptime, all damage multiplier of 21% for the legendary bonus. So additive multiplier, multiplier for Unleash. Really solid glyph now, in my opinion. And then for our last two, we have our well-known staple sorcerer glyphs that have always been basically part of the kit, and that is destruction and exploit. And so these are the ones where your build is going to want to be focused on crit if you're going to use destruction, which most endgame sorcerer builds are because it's a huge source of damage increase. And same thing with Vuln. You're, you're going to want to be getting high vulnerability uptime on stuff, which most endgame builds do. Like if you're rocking Winter Glass with Frozen Orb, you're just going to have 100% Vuln uptime on everything without doing anything except summoning your conjurations, right? So we look at destruction. What do we got? We got a golden glyph. We have big additive crit damage at top. So we're going to want to try to max that out with as much dex as we can. You can see I have it slotted in Burning Instinct right now, which is one of the highest dex boards with 59 in the new range. Um, and then we have a uh, multiplier for the additional bonus. We have uh, up to 12% multiplier as we crit. Uh, and when, as we're scaling towards end game, a lot of times we're going for hundred percent crit chance. So we can basically consider that close to hundred percent uptime. And then when we look at the legendary bonus, we are getting increased critical strike damage multiplier by 28.5%. And again, like, like a glyph like destruction is a really good one to sort of, uh, internalize the idea of uptime, like for destruction, your uptime on like this bottom multiplier crit strike damage is going to be your crit chance. So if you have 60% crit chance your uptime on increased critical strike damage by 28.5% is going to be 60%. And if you have an 80% crit chance, your uptime is gonna be 80%. If you have 100% crit chance, which a lot of endgame Sork builds are going towards, this is gonna have 100% uptime on this 28.5% multiplicative increase. All right, so then coming down to exploit, basically same exact thing here, except for vulnerabilities. So we have additive vulnerability at the top that we're trying to max out our decks around. I have it in fundamental release right now, which has 49 decks. And then additional bonus of up to a 10% multiplier against vulnerable enemies. And then legendary bonus of 21% uh, multiplicative damage to all vulnerable targets. And so just like critical strike damage, think of uptime as the amount you have stuff vulnerable. So this one, you kind of have to more guess. It's not going to be an exact number, but let's say you're rocking winter glass with frozen orb. I would consider your uptime, uh, 
on this legendary bonus somewhere like between 90 and 95 percent very high and most end game builds are going to have significantly high uptime on vulnerability so again both these multipliers are going to have solid uptime and they are going to achieve the maximum possible damage increase we are going for because if we look at all these glyphs together we now have 10 damage multipliers instead of the eight we had before and the legendary bonuses actually give us much bigger chunks of multiplicative damage so we look at all of them together this one's special remember because we have intelligence multiplicative as the bonus but then we have really high uptime multiplicative damage for the additional bonus as well as the legendary bonus looking at elementalist we're going to have additive scaling at the top as long as it's slotted by a non-physical node we're going to have 15 percent multiplier with very high uptime as long as we have a multi-element build and we're going to have 21 percent multiplier with 100 percent uptime on this legendary bonus for Unleash, same thing, big additive from uh, boosting the magic nodes around it. So big increase additive in this example for two elites and two non-physical. Uh, and then 8% uh, multiplier for the additional bonus and then 21% multiplier for the legendary bonus, both with 100% uptime. And then destruction, big critical strike added at the top, critical strike multiplier for the additional bonus, big critical strike multiplier for the legendary bonus. The uptime depends on our crit chance. And then exploit, same idea with Voln, big additive at the top, multiplier for the additional bonus big multiplier for the legendary bonus uptime dependent on how much we have stuff vulnerable all right now let's quickly talk about like the order of the progression and it's going to be uh important to sort of keep multiple things in mind here and this is a bit of personal preference but the order i'm going to level these glyphs is likely going to be eliminator first because we can get really high value out of this normal node scaling for early intelligence increase and we're also going to have basically 100 percent uptime on the multipliers versus elites and bosses like we talked about and so I think this is going to be the first one I level. After that, I'm going to likely level uh, Unleash. And that's because mana isn't super good early on. Like we're going to be just getting into our Paragon levels, right? So in my second board, I'll probably have slotted in uh, Unleash here. And that's going to give us uh, a increase to the magic nodes like we talked about. So if you put it in a good spot where you're really going to max the value of these magic nodes from both sides like this with... This is in uh, Enchantment Master, where we have elite damage and non-physical. All that's getting boosted by this bonus. And then we have the 8% multiplier with the mana regen that we can bring online with 40 int. And then we have the 100% uptime, 21% multiplicative from the legendary bonus. And something really important to keep in mind with this strategy, guys, is basically what we're going to be doing is like, as we're leveling, there's the increment at 15, and then there's the increment at 46. So we basically want to, if you if you aren't able to get that first additional bonus online within the min range, like at level one, and you need to get that additional node range uh, to unlock at level 15 in, in order to get the additional bonus online, what you want to do is basically be making sure you're prioritizing getting your glyphs to 15, like as you're socketing them, if possible. So, you know, ideally it's like, you're leveling your eliminator right off the bat you're coming up in your second board and like here i'd be looking to slot unleash but like as i'm getting to this socket i want to be trying to get unleash to level 15 so i can have this additional bonus online from the 40 int most nodes some nodes you can but most nodes you can't get i think this is actually one of them where you could get 40 int in the first range with level one but in general most are going to require you to have that level 15 second range in order to get like the 40 int required or whatever and so in most cases you want to be looking to whatever new glyph you're looking to socket as you're coming up to a board consider trying to get that one to 15 so you can slot it in and instantly have that additional bonus online so like I basically, as I'm nearing this socket, I put my, and grinding the pit, I put my eliminator on pause uh, and I start to level my unleash. And as soon as I get to this second socket, I throw in my level 15 unleash. It's instantly online with the additional bonus. Then I go back to my eliminator and try to get it to 46. So we're always looking to hit the 15 threshold and then the 46 threshold. And that's what's gonna give us these bonuses. So as soon as I get unleashed to 15, come back and I'm looking to get eliminator to 46. And then, for my third glyph, I'm going to go with exploit. Um, and so, you know, moving up to my third board, I'm doing the same thing where as soon as I get eliminator to 46, then I'm looking to get unleashed to 46 so I can unlock unleashes legendary bonus, right? But I'm also paying attention to how close I'm getting to this third Paragon board socket because I want to be having my exploit ready to go and being able to be instantly online with this 25 decks required for the additional bonus, right? So maybe as I'm coming up here, I put my, you know, maybe I got my Eliminator to 46 and I'm leveling my uh, Unleash to 46 now. Maybe as I'm coming up here, I put my Unleash on pause and I start to 
you know, pump levels into my exploit to get it to 15, and then boom, you know, socket and exploit at 15, go back to getting unleashed to 46. And then as I'm moving over to my fourth board, my fourth glyph is going to be destruction. So same exact idea as I'm coming up to this socket, I'm looking to get my destruction to level 15 to be ready to bring this additional bonus online if possible. And then uh, as soon as I get my uh, unleash, uh, my second glyph unleashed to 46, then I'm looking to, you know, level my exploit to 46 to unlock its legendary bonus. But I'm, but I'm wanting to bring my additional bonus from destruction online first, right? And then, you know, as soon as you get destruction to 15 slotted in here, you go back to exploit, finish getting that one to 46. And then you start working on destruction to 46 as you're getting to this last socket, which is my fifth glyph that I level is probably going to be elementalist because I think it has the least effective uh, additional bonus out of all of them, even though it has pretty good multipliers. Multipliers are going to become more effective the later you get into the game anyways. And so... I think this is probably going to be the fifth one I level for those reasons. And same thing where like as you're coming up to this socket, you want to consider getting Elementalist to 15 to be ready to bring online as soon as you socket it in here. And meanwhile, you're working on getting your destruction to 46. And then as soon as you get this in here and your destruction 46, you level exploit to 46. And the idea is like your, your end game progression, you're going to have all your glyphs at 46 before you take any to 100. Uh, just like the same way, like a lot of times in builds as you're progressing, you would bring your glyphs to level 15 before you would take them all to 21. It's that same exact idea. We just have another step. So we're getting them all to 15 to bring the additional bonus online. Uh, then we're trying to get them all to 46 to bring the legendary bonus online. And we're trying to do that basically as soon as possible as we are progressing through our boards, right? All right. So I hope all that made sense. A uh, quick overview of the order I'm going to go. This is a little bit of personal preference, guys. So if you want to do a different order based on your build or how something you're leaning into, you know, this is like not super critical, the order you actually do them in. This is the order I think is going to deliver the highest possible damage as I'm leveling through my Paragon board. So I'm going to do Eliminator first, maxing out Int in the first socket. I'm going to do Unleash second. I'm going to do Exploit third. I'm going to do Destruction fourth. And I'm going to do Elementalist fifth. And then when you get to end game, you want to rearrange them to be positioned to squeeze the maximum possible value out of the uh, top additive bonus, right? And so you can see uh, this isn't the order I'm leveling them in. This is the final order that I will have them in um, this elemental uh, constellation familiars build. So in this final end game version, I basically have the glyphs placed in the appropriate places to try to maximize the value of their additional bonus while still maintaining enough points to reach all the extra nodes I need. Now let's quickly like go through all the glyphs and kind of look at, you know, how good they are compared to a golden glyph. So let's check out Adept. Uh, we get mastery skill damage increase uh, for our bonus. So if you're rocking a meteor or a blizzard build or something with a mastery skill, that's gonna give you um, additive for that. And then additional bonus, we have increased area, so not increased multiplier. So you're gonna need a very specific type of build for this area to be worth it over say a 15% or 10% multiplier, right? And if you even look at like a blizzard build that's using ice spikes, you don't want this because the more spread out your blizzard is, the more spread out your ice spikes become. So like area actually has negative synergy with ice spikes builds. You want your blizzard to be as small as possible. So the ice spikes are as concentrated as possible, hitting as much stuff, you know, in that like concentrated area. And then legendary bonus, we have another mastery skill increase. That's probably the 28.5% if I had to guess on there. Charged, I think, is actually a good one for lightning build. So like I said, I'm rocking, I'm rocking this in my fractured lightning build instead of elementalist. And this one's going to give you additive to crackling energy, which doesn't really matter. Uh, what it does give you that's really good is a 15% multiplier with 100% uptime on the additional bonus and then a 21% multiplier with 100% uptime on your lightning damage or the legendary bonus. And you need to be getting some form of crackling energy to get this. So I'm actually sorry. I'm running this in my Esodora's Conduit crackling energy chain lightning build, not my fractured lightning build. Actually, I might be running it in both. Anyways, you need to be able to grab crackling energy to bring this bonus online. Just keep that in mind. But you don't need much. You know, you literally need just a little bit here and there. You need to be grabbing three like right off the bat. And you need to be picking up like one every five seconds in order to keep this online. Conjure, we saw a lot of builds with winter glass using this one before because of this increased conjuration duration and that letting them get to that 30 plus conjuration mastery cap. I think this one is going to sort of drop in priority with there only being a five glyph limit because we have uh, no multiplier on the additional bonus. And then we have for the legendary bonus, a multiplier only to our conjuration skill damage, which even in like full conjuration builds is usually like a low portion of our damage. Our damage is coming from like 
splintering energy aspect or things like that, not from the actual like lightning spears themselves. And for that same reason, the additive on this one is not that good either. I think control is like a really good like, like second tier glyph. Like if you're looking to sub something in for elementalist or if you have a build with high crowd control, I think control can be really good. You're gonna get really big additive and multiplicative out of this one as long as stuff is crowd controlled. So the biggest downside to this glyph is the lack of 100% uptime on the additional bonus, on the additive bonus, and on the legendary bonus. It's only gonna apply when you have CC. So if you consider bosses, this is gonna be not active at all until you stagger them. And then it's gonna be online as they're staggered. Uh, and like elites, uh, as soon as they become unstoppable, if you don't kill them in that first crowd control window, uh, they are not gonna be affected by this either. And so if you're running this cliff, my recommendation would be like, if you have like a, if your main CC is stun, look for tempers on like, um, your chest or boots or whatever that give stun duration. Because the longer you can have stuff crowd controlled, like especially elites before they become unstoppable, uh, the higher uptime you're gonna get out of these bonuses, right? And like if you're running a winter glass build with frozen orb, look for freeze duration, same idea, right? Electrocute, another lightning damage focus one, but not as good simply because it doesn't have two multipliers. So, and also the top additive bonus is not super great. It's just gonna do, basically what Elementalist does to non-physical for lightning only nodes. Um, so there's only gonna be a few spots you can even slot this in probably. Uh, and then the additional bonus is just gonna give you crit strike chance, which like most builds are looking to get, you know, to like 100% crit chance without any additional bonus like this. And 5% is a really small amount of crit chance to be giving up something like a 10 or 15% damage multiplier for it. Um, and then the uh, legendary bonus is just 21% to overall lightning damage multiplier. And so this one's uh, very mid tier, I think. Uh, it could work with certain builds, but probably is not gonna be uh, super useful in most. Flame Feeder used to be really good for burning builds, I think is still pretty good. The biggest problem with Flame Feeder is the low uptime on the legendary bonus at the bottom. So you can see you deal 30% increased damage to healthy enemies. So that's uh, only gonna have 20% uptime if you consider that uh, healthy only applies to 80% and up. Uh, and so you're only gonna get this 28.5% multiplier when the target is like on a boss when it's 80% health or higher, and then that's gonna turn off uh, as soon as you get them below 80%. Uh, you're still gonna get this 10% direct damage to burning enemies, uh, as long as you're burning stuff and direct damage is your focus, not dots. Uh, and then you are gonna get this nice, it does have a nice additive bonus at the top. And so for certain uh, builds that are utilizing burning and fire, I think Flame Feeder could be good. Uh, we're just missing out on the uptime on the legendary bonus. And let's just go from there uh, right to Torch because it's basically the same exact thing. So we look, we get a uh, nice increased burning damage uh, from the uh, additive at the top. We get a multiplicative to burning from the additional bonus, uh, but then our legendary bonus is only active on healthy enemies again. So we'll get big burning at the start, but as soon as they drop below 80%, that uh, 28.5% multiplicative damage will fall off. And so I think Torch and Flame Feeder got a little worse, to be honest, compared to the other ones, just because of that, um, the uptime on that legendary bonus. If we look at Frostbite, we have decent additive at the top to chilled. We have some decent damage reduction as the additional bonus. Uh, and then we have a 21% multiplicative to cold damage. So if you're running like a build that's mostly cold damage and you need more defensives, that's when you would want to rock Frostbite. Otherwise, the multipliers are not going to stack up against the ones we talked about if you're looking for more damage output. Imbiber, uh, Imbiber, in my opinion, has never been a good glyph. I've never really run this with, with any build. It has decent additive at the top as you're healthy, um, and then it gives you this increased potion healing as the additional bonus, which like I literally never need. There's never a time on Sorcerer where I press my potion and I don't go to full health um, just because of how low of health we have, basically. And the legendary bonus for this one's actually pretty good. So we're going to get a 25% multiplier with pretty close to 100% uptime as long as we're healthy most of the time. So like any builds with like barriers and stuff, uh, if you're healthy most of the time, that's going to be... So this one is like, again, fairly average, could work in very niche cases. Uh, invocation, similar thing to Frostbite, where um, this additional bonus is actually going to give us damage reduction instead of... Uh, an extra multiplier. And in general, our conjurations, even in like full winter glass builds, aren't doing a huge percentage of our damage. It's stuff like um, the splintering energy, like we talked about, right? It's not the actual lightning spear. So this additional critical strike damage and this additional uh, skill damage doesn't apply to things like aspects for the conjurations, it only applies to the conjurations themselves. So I think this is, again, pretty mid tier one. Pyromaniac, uh, pretty good, like, you know, second tier glyph right under the golden ones we talked about if you're gonna fire build. So you're gonna get this like elementalist like fire additive at the top and then you're gonna get 
a multiplier for the additional bonus uh, up to 10% with fire, and then you're going to get uh, the 21% multiplicative to fire for the legendary bonus. So going to stalagmite, this one uh, is still very average or really just not great at all. I've actually never ran this one because, again, we're missing a multiplier for the additional bonus. And generally, we don't need that critical strike chance with Ice Spikes. Now, if you're in an Ice Spikes build where you're not scaling to 100% crit chance or you're struggling to get there, that's where this one would be good. So if you're rocking Ice Spikes and you need to cover that 20% crit gap, uh, then this would be a good glyph to run. But that's basically the only case you'd want to do that. Tactician, sadly, I think fell off a little bit. It has the same additive bonus to rare nodes as Reinforce, so that's good. And we still have the 10% multiplier on the additional bonus, so that's good. Uh, but the biggest thing is that the legendary bonus requires us to be close. And so uh, basically, depending on how often your build is close determines how much uptime you're going to have on this legendary bonus. So if you're in you know, something like an Arc Lash or Ball Lightning build where you're literally always going to be close... Uh, then you're going to have close to 100% uptime on this 25% multiplicative, then I think this one would be really good. Otherwise, it's not nearly as good as it used to be because it used to be slotted in as that sort of easy 10% multiplier regardless of the build because we're always rocking defensives, right? So I'm probably not going to be using Tactician a ton. Uh, and then we look at Territorial. Uh, similar thing with this one where you need to be close to get the damage reduction. So if you're rocking a build with Tactician where you are close, then you might want to look to you know, slot in territorial because you're getting nice additive to close at the top. You're getting damage reduction against close as the additional. And then interestingly, you're getting, um, for some reason, 21% <laughs> multiplicative to vulnerable as a legendary bonus, which I'm not sure how that is related to the close stuff. But, um, and then we already talked about torch when we were talking about, uh, flame feeder and we go to warding. Uh, this glyph has always been not very great. I think, um, yeah, it's basically just because of the the functionality of this additional bonus. Like, it could be good with certain builds where you're like, boom, most of the time. But like, the further we get into the end game, usually like the better our mana gets. And so this one kind of like that that damage reduction is going to like fall off in value. Like the better our mana gets. So this is like almost like a reverse scaling glyph. It's a little weird. Um, you're going to get decent additive to rare nodes at the top, and you are going to get just the hundred percent uptime on the non physical multiplier from the legendary bonus and so it's, it's not the worst uh but unless they change something with the way this damage reduction feels and the mana i've never felt too much damage reduction from this glyph and i honestly haven't even messed with it a ton i've used it a little bit in a few builds back in like season four and i don't think i used it in season five all right so last one we're looking at winter and this one again is going to be a cold focused one we're getting that same additive bonus to rare that we see on a lot of the glyphs at the top we are getting an additional bonus of 18%, so big additional bonus multiplier, but it has to be cold damage. Uh, and then for the legendary bonus, we are getting 28.5% uh, multiplicative to crowd controlled. And you can see the additional bonus comes online when you chill or freeze, which are crowd control. So those are kind of linked through crowd control there. Reinforced, I think, is probably our best defensive glyph, guys. So if you're in any sort of build uh, that's struggling with... Um, getting killed a lot or you need more damage reduction. Uh, I think this is like probably one of our best ones to run. So we're going to get a nice additive bonus to rare nodes. You want to sock it in where you can maximize the uh, most value out of the rare nodes uh, within the glyph range. And then we get the uh, damage reduction from the additional bonus. And we get this nice, just easy 21% multiplicative with the legendary bonus with 100% uptime. So I think reinforced remains like top tier. And that's like, all, that's like a defensive golden glyph. Like if you had to categorize... Defensive is like this would be a defensive golden glyph because we have uh, additive at the top. We have multiplier, just defensive multiplier for the additional bonus, and we have offensive multiplier for legendary bonus, right? All right, so Enchanter, if you've been following me for a while, this is one of my favorite glyphs of all time. And we can see we're getting this big additive increase, and it says non physical here, but uh, in the PTR, this did not count as non physical damage. So the reason Enchanter would be super good now, despite not having a multiplier for the additional bonus, is if this top additive bonus does scale non-physical because if we're running enlightenment, all of our non-physical is combined while lightning is active. So like, let's say you have a thousand non-physical for fire, a thousand non-physical for cold, a thousand non-physical for lightning. Like if you're running enchanter, that's putting additive into all three of those buckets, right? If you're running the, the new enlightenment key passive, all of those are getting added together while enlightenment's active. Like that's what enlightenment does. If we look at it real quick, um, while enlightened, your bonus damage with fire, lightning, and cold are equal to them combined. 
and you gain nice multiplicative and juice and attack speed. So when I first saw this, I was like, holy crap, Enchanter is gonna be insane because if we can max the value uh, of this non-physical coming from the additive, all that's going to stack into enlightenment and get added with each other. And so you're gonna basically get triple value out of this additive bonus at the top. And during the PTR, it did not count as non-physical. So like right here on Mobilytics, it says non-physical, but in the PTR, it did not show non-physical. I'm gonna go look at the patch notes real quick to make sure uh, that didn't get changed. Yeah, guys, so the word enchanter is nowhere to be found in the 2.01 or the 2.02 patch changes. And so unless they ghost changed this, this will actually not count as non-physical, sadly. And so it won't do that crazy triple stacking with enlightenment. However, if they did ghost change this, enchanter becomes a very strong glyph with enlightenment for the crazy additive stack we can get with that, with all the fire and cold and lightning getting added together, right? So TBD on that, we will see tomorrow if Enchanter uh, actually counts as non-physical or if it's like PTR where it doesn't. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it for this one. I always talk way more than I think I am going to about this stuff. So in conclusion, I think our best glyphs for the reasons we talked about, they are golden glyphs with big additive at the top, multiplier with high uptime for additional bonus, big multiplier with high uptime for legendary bonus. And those are going to be uh, Eliminator, Unleash, Exploit, Destruction and Elementalist. And the caveats we talked about are like, if you're not running a build that uses multi-element, we maybe switch Elementalist to one of our B tier glyphs we talked about. Charged is a close second if we're rocking a lightning build. Control is a close second if we have good CC. Uh, we're just gonna miss out on that boss damage unless they're staggered. Enchanter, if this counts as non-physical, which it didn't in the PTR, but if it counts as non-physical and you actually see it getting added as fire, frost, or lightning in your stat sheet, um, then this one will have really good synergy with enlightenment. But as of the PTR, it did not work that way. And so sadly, Enchanter has fallen off the, the very top of my glyph priority list. Uh, maybe if they tune that, it'll be back up there. We'll have to see with this one. And then Flame Feeder and Torch, not as good as they used to be because of this low uptime on the legendary bonus like we talked about. Tactician, not as good as it used to be for the same reason, the requirement to be close to activate the multiplier. Again, this one still could be good for builds where you're looking to be close, like same thing with like Territorial, right? Our Golden Defensive Glyph is gonna be reinforced. So if you're looking to squeeze a little more damage reduction out of your glyphs, this is gonna still give you good additive scaling at the top, uh, good, legendary uh, multiplicative scaling, but then you're just basically switching your additional bonus from a damage multiplier over to a damage reduction multiplier. And obviously you're gonna need a barrier active for this one, but like most end game sorcerer builds, we have barriers up all the time with our protection passive and all that stuff, right? And so similar to how charged is like our lightning focused glyph, pyromaniac is like our fire specific glyph that's decent. And then winter is our cold specific glyph that's decent. So those are kind of the, you know, the second tier glyphs that you could consider slotting in behind these or instead of these, depending on specifics of your certain build or whatever. Um, but yeah, boom, that is all I got for this one. I uh, hope all that made sense. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. I will do my best to answer those. I'm going to be going completely ham, be no ballistic uh, come 4 p.m. tomorrow. And I'm probably going to make a big, you know, like, like, like multi-day push to try to figure out some Spiritborn builds and get you guys some early Spiritborn build guides and then follow that up with uh, the Sorcerer build guides I've been working on. But if you're looking to rock one of my Sorcerer builds, that's the reason I tested a bunch of these in PTR. So those ones I already have made are kind of going to be the first Sorcerer builds I'm retesting during the new season. But any changes that have happened already or that will happen, those builds are updated in the planner. So I kind of have my Sorcerer build base uh, ready to go for you guys. And I'm going to try to build my spirit born build base, like right as the season starts and then come back to sorcerer very quickly. I'm probably going to be leveling them like in tandem. I'm still going to be playing sorcerer like a shitload right off the bat. Um, but that's going to kind of be my focus is like figure out spirit born, get those builds out and simultaneously look to be gearing up my sorcerer so I can, uh, kind of revisit these builds. And I also, have a bunch of new cool sorcerer builds to look at as well. So I can't wait, super stoked to get out there tomorrow. And yeah, I hope you guys all have a really good time and really enjoy yourself in the Hantu. And I'll see you out there. Love you. Take care of yourself. Peace.